Finally, he's here! The program of the year! Wave Electronics version 2 I finally introduced a capacitor. But what exactly is a capacitor? Let's take a sheet of paper and a tin foil. With the help of your scissor, cut a square of 10 cm from the tin foil. When you have finished, repeat the operation for another square. Finally, you must deposit the squares on each side of your paper and use a scotch tape to fix the edges. This is a capacitor. So a capacitor is just two metal plates divided by an insulator. Now the second question is spontaneous. How does a capacitor work? This is a capacitor. When a voltage is applied to a capacitor, highly energetic electrons start to accumulate to one side. The electrons accumulated generate an electric field inside the insulator. The insulator does not contain charges, so nothing special happens inside of it. The electric field continues its journey and it reaches the other part of the capacitor. This is formed by a metal plate full of electrons. They are repelled from the electric field and escape from the available wire. Let's consider the capacitor as a box. We see that some electrons at the beginning enter the box and as a consequence some electrons exit from the other part. So we can say that uh, there is a current flowing through the box, even if you know that no electron effectively travels from one side to the other. If nothing changes, the current will stop flowing. Why? Because at some point there are not any more electrons to be moved. If I switch the potential to negative values, electrons can finally relax in the left part of the capacitor. But now they start to accumulate in the other part and the story restarts again. There is a connection between a change in the potential applied and the current and the precise equation is the current that flows in the capacitor is the product of the capacity of the device and the time derivative of the potential. This is true if the electric field is not particularly high. In strong regimes, some electrons are able to pass the oxide and reach the other part of the capacitor. We have the so-called electric discharge. This is exactly what I implement in the second version of Wave Electronics. In the description below, you will find a link to download the program and play with it. Let's jump in the major differences introduced in the new version. First of all, you will notice that the LED buttons are disappear and in exchange we have uh, these two small green arrows. If the mouse gets close to these arrows, the buttons will appear, but they remain on screen only if the cursor is in their proximity. I'm personally satisfied with this little detail. Then I implement the possibility to save and load a scene. Previously, when you work hard on a project and you close the program, you lose all the components forever. If you want to build the circuit again, you must arm yourself with patience and place every block again. This is not truth anymore. Now, when you are proud of your work, you can just press save and all the circuit is saved in the computer memory. You can go outside, take some coffee, watch PewDiePie, don't know, talk with Alexa, and then when you will enter again in the program, you can load all your stuff immediately. The last update regards the detection system. Previously, there was just this little rectangle with the information of voltage, current or resistance the moment you press the component. The problem is that uh, when we are working with a capacitor, we are dealing with a time-dependent phenomena and so we want a time description of the circuit property. For this reason, I create my personal graph. So now, when you click on some components, a graph will appear on the right down part of the screen. Data will fill the graph from left to right, and when the graph is completed, the data are shifted, so you always watch the last history of the component. The data are also rescaled to properly stay always inside the graph, and when the difference between the maximum and the minimum is smaller than 0.01, the graph will tend to create a flat line. Do you want some spoilers for the next episode? Follow me on Instagram, link in the description.
Finally, let's see the new capacitor. You can implement it by pressing Create Capacitor and you place it wherever you want. Let's build a simple RC circuit. We want a battery and we can locate it down here, then a resistor with a value of 1 ohm and a capacitor of 100 farad. Then we can connect all with a wire and press play. In a RC circuit, the theory says that we reach a final potential exponentially, with a time constant that depends on the capacity and resistor value. In this case, the time constant will be R.C, so 100 time unit. And indeed, if you observe the voltage, in approximately 100 time unit, it reaches its final value. If we modify the capacity value, for example to 50, we will see that the potential will arise faster. For what concerns the current, I can observe it by pressing I when the graph is active. This works only for wires. We can also create a circuit with a resistor and a capacitor in parallel. Fortunately, I already created. I can press load and all the components will arrive in the right position. In this case, in the beginning, all the current will flow in the capacitor because it does not meet any resistance. But over time it becomes more difficult for electrons to accumulate in the capacitor plates. And so they decide to go to the resistor. This is a final more complicated circuit that you can replicate in your program. If you have any suggestion to improve the program, please, please write it in the comment section. Also this time, Unity surpassed my imagination.